What is it, Pips? The Duke of Langer to see His Majesty. His Majesty is out. Yes, sir. Any message for the Duke, sir? No message for the Duke. Very good, sir. What? Hello. Yes. What? No, madam, this is not the Royal Cleaning Company. This is the Royal Palace. You have the wrong number. That's quite all right. His Majesty is out. Yes, sir. It's the Marcus of Burton, sir. Oh, send him in. His Excellency, the Foreign Minister. Your Excellency. Well, how do you do, Gerton? And where's His Majesty? He went out, sir. For a walk, I imagine. Hmm. And uh, Her Majesty? Finishing the preparations for her trip. The palace has been in quite an uproar this morning. No wonder the king went out for a walk. And what time does the queen leave? The procession leaves the palace at four sharp. The boat sails at six. But I must see her before she goes. I have some important news for her. I will tell Her Majesty that you called. I suppose the king is quite upset over the queen's departure. So, uh, yes, sir. He feels very badly about it. Oh, he does, does he? <laughs> His Majesty is out. Her Royal Highness, Princess Anne. Oh. Alone? Yes. Freddy. And darling. Give me a cigarette quickly. Oh, what a nuisance mother is. You know, I feel sorry for your mother. She has to settle all the affairs of the nation before she leaves for America. I know, but she doesn't have to make such an infernal fuss about everything. She's furious now because father has gone out. Mother tries to boss everything. Well, she's not going to boss me. I'm not her husband. I'm going to lead my own life. And may I ask when you intend to start? As soon as she's safely away on a trip to America. One of these days, mother will pick up a New York paper and discover her daughter has eloped. You are going to elope with me, aren't you, Freddy? Oh, yes, Anne. I wouldn't let you elope alone. <laughs> oh, you are sweet, Freddy. You're giving up everything for me, aren't you? Now, I'm giving up everything. Well, I like that. It's you who's giving up everything for me. You'll never be forgiven. <laughs> but I don't want to be forgiven. I only want to get away from this stifling place. I want to be happy and free. You know? <laughs> there's no one here who will really miss me for a minute when I've gone. Well, there's your father. Yes, there's father. But father won't mind. He'll understand. He'd like to be free, too. Well, if only he'd abdicate. Oh, if he only would. But he won't. He wouldn't dare try anything as strenuous as abdication. Mother wouldn't let him. You know how mother is. Oh. I do. One well, of the things it's our duty to keep the throne occupied. Duty. That's all I've been allowed to think about since the day I was born. I'm going to think about myself, my own happiness for a change. I'm going away with you. Oh, but when can we start, Anne? I'm trying hard to be patient, but I... I can't wait much longer. It's terrible having to wait. Terrible for me too, Freddie, darling. But we mustn't take any chances until Mother's safely across the Atlantic. Well, I wish her bon voyage. Her Majesty the Queen. Has His Majesty taken the trouble to come here yet? No, ma'am, he hasn't. Doesn't he realize that we're to leave here in another hour? Doesn't he know that he's to put on his hussar's uniform for the procession to the harbour? Yes, ma'am. I'm quite certain His Majesty has been advised to that. Then why hasn't he come here? Wouldn't you think that he would know that all this was terribly worrying, terribly upsetting for me? And your father is a very inconsiderate, very thoughtless man. Oh, don't be silly, Mother. Father probably thought he'd just be in the way. Well, he would have been in the way. But just the same, he should have spoken to me before he went out. Uh, Lord Burton called, ma'am. He asked to see you. 
Suggested he had good news for you and said he'd come back later. Then I shall wait right here. You two go and get ready for the procession. Yes, ma'am. Has General Northrop been here? Uh, no, ma'am. Prime Minister hasn't been to the palace all day. I hope he doesn't come. I hope I never see his scowling face again. Now, Mother, you know you'd be perfectly furious if he didn't stop in to wish you goodbye. I don't want any kind wishes from General Northrop, thank you. I don't like it. He's no business to be Prime Minister of this country. Yes, and if it weren't for General Northrop and his army, this country would be a republic. And where would you be then? I know where I'd be. I'm happy to say there is no danger of that. Thank heaven. Thank heaven we have the confidence and loving loyalty of our people. The monarchy will never fall. Oh, where is the king? What on earth does he think he's doing, wandering aimlessly around when he's needed here? Oh, forget it, Mother. There's plenty of time. There'll never be plenty of time for your father. Probably you'll need a shave, and that always takes him hours. And someday you'll be a queen. And then you'll know what troubles I've had, what sacrifices I've made. Then you'll know what I've had to put up with. Don't worry, Mother. You're going away on a nice, long vacation. Vacation? Do you think for one moment that I'm going to America for pleasure? I'm going to work for the good of my dear country. I never do anything that isn't for the good of my country. Well? Yes, ma'am. General uh, Northup, together with the Marcus of Burton, ma'am. There you are. Important business to be attended to, and the king is not here. I will see them. Yes, ma'am. I'll speak to the king about this with everything that I have on my mind, and if he's dawdling about in this manner, it's simply this bit. His Supreme Excellency, the Prime Minister. His Excellency, the Foreign Minister. Your Majesty. Your Majesty. Your Royal Highness. Your Royal Highness. Gentlemen. I've been given to understand, ma'am, that His Majesty is not here. You've not been misinformed. I have some matters of vital importance to discuss. Then you may discuss them now. We're leaving in a short time, and we cannot wait for the King. I've had another conference with the people's leader, ma'am, Dr. Fellman. You can't ask me to become excited about that, General. You're always having conferences. And if I weren't, we'd find ourselves involved in a revolution. A revolution? What nonsense. Fellman wouldn't dare try anything like that. Ah, but Fellman isn't the only one, ma'am. There are others, hundreds of thousands of them. Determined to overthrow the monarchy. Are you arresting any of these violent-minded men? We're arresting them by the hundreds. There can be but one punishment for such traitors. And that punishment is death. Then why not execute them? There's a reason for that, ma'am. You may or may not know. That our Constitution provides... Now you don't have to tell me anything about our Constitution. My great-grandfather wrote it. Mm. Go on. Then you are aware that no political prisoner can be put to death until his sentence has been countersigned by the King. Well? There are over 50 such death sentences in His Majesty's desk at this very moment, waiting to be signed. They've been there for over a week. Is this true, Branton? Why... Why, yes, ma'am. I tell you, ma'am, the situation is intolerable. These executions must go through. At once. They shall go through. Yes, Majesty, the King. Good afternoon. Where have you been? I've been down to the Royal Zoo, my dear. I've been watching the penguins walk. I love to watch the penguins, do they walk just like human beings. We've no time now to discuss penguins. Mm-hmm. What's the matter? I've just heard that you've neglected to sign hundreds of orders for the execution of dangerous characters. Who told you that? I told her that, sir, and I shall be happy to repeat my words to you. You needn't bother. I can't understand how you could be so careless. How you could neglect your duty in such a slipshod, irresponsible manner. But don't you realize that these criminals will murder us all if you give them a chance? Can't you see that the monarchy is in dreadful danger? My dear, I Her Majesty is right. Naturally. Now, just what am I to do about it? You are to sign those orders of execution. They've been accumulating in your desk for weeks. On my desk? On my desk? What? 
There must be something wrong here. Where should they be? I've never heard of anything quite as ridiculous as that in my life. Oh! Granton, where are those papers, Granton? I'm afraid it's my fault, sir. I took them down to the Lord Chancellor's office for verification. Well, you go right down to the Lord Chancellor's office and get them right back again. Yes, sir. Now, you see, it wasn't my fault after all. In my opinion, that man should be instantly dismissed. I should hope so. He's a pest anyway. I'll attend to him later. And the signed orders will be in my hands today. General, you may rest assured that I shall make every effort in my they power. Will. I will see to them. There, you see, you can put it right out of your mind now. I understand that Lord Burton has something to say to us. Well, we're always glad to hear from Lord Burton. I think you'll be glad to hear what I have to say, sir. I am happy... I am proud to say that I've completed the little arrangement on which we've all set our hearts. So, what was that? I received only an hour ago telegraphic communication from the foreign office in Gleck. Yes? What is it? I think that a marriage can be arranged between Prince William of Gleck and our own beloved Princess Anne. What? Is it settled? Practically. And I may add that this could never have been accomplished had it not been for the tireless efforts of Your Majesty. My darling child, you're engaged to be married. Allow me to offer my heartfelt congratulations, Your Royal Highness. And my congratulations. This will give us the prestige we've so long deserved. Congratulations for what? It's a glorious triumph for our diplomacy. And you've made a perfectly marvelous match. I've made a match? What have I had to do with it? Have I been asked? No one has even bothered to consult me about this. Well, I believe I can explain. It was advisable to keep this matter a profound secret for diplomatic reasons. Thus, we deemed it unwise to divulge the terms, even to your highness. The terms? Oh, so there were terms. Oh, yes. Your majesty, the marriage agreement provides that the Princess Anne will, of course, become Empress of Grec in due time. Now, the eldest son will become the heir to the throne. The second son will two become... Two brothers, my sons. So the contract provides that I shall produce two male children. Well, how do you know I can? Oh, oh how oh. shocking the indelicate. That's just what it is. Indelicate, horrible, revolting. And come with me this instant. Come to your rooms. Do you hear? Father, you love me. You understand me. Can you let this terrible thing happen? Are you going to let them do this to me? We're all right, my darling. You go to your rooms now. We'll talk about it later. Come with me. Go with your mother, Anne, and uh, don't cry anymore. I'll have a little talk with her. Poor child. Then she'll get over it when she realizes what this means. Just what does it mean? This is beyond question the greatest diplomatic victory in now the history not, of our... Let us not go into all that again. I know it is a glorious triumph, and you all deserve to be very proud of yourself. But I also know that I do not care to entrust my daughter's happiness to Prince William of Grec. Now, look here, so you're all wrong I can about this. I no light in which this would appear other than disagreeable and distasteful. Your Majesty, Majesty, I, I do not care to hear or speak of it again. Your Majesty. Well, king or no king, he didn't think he can block our plans for this wedding. Don't worry. It's all settled. Is the marriage contract signed and sealed? They're as good as married now. Ah, uh, good. Good. But I'm glad we're going to be rid of the Queen for a time. We'll be able to get things done now. Oh, she won't interfere in this marriage. She's as anxious for it to go through as we are. Yes, I know, but she's too officious. The king at least knows enough to keep his place. But she's very useful sometimes. Yes, as a press agent. She'll make these rich Americans pay heavily for the privilege of shaking hands with royalty. But here at home, we're not dealing with Americans. Dr. Feldman and his revolutionists are looking for trouble, and I'm going to see that they get it. Yes, sir. What the deuce have you done with that checkerboard? Begging your majesty's pardon, I placed it here for safekeeping. Well, I wish you'd all get together and come to some definite, permanent hiding place for this checkerboard. Yes, sir. Perhaps I should explain.
explain, sir, that Her Majesty found the old one and had it thrown out. Well, there's one satisfaction, Phipps. There's always plenty more checkable. Yes, sir. Come on now, I'm going to beat the hide off you. No, sir. You know, Phipps, you have an unfair advantage over me. An unfair advantage, sir? Does your majesty imagine that I should be guilty of petty cheating in oh, checkers? Don't be a fool, Phipps. What I meant was that you get a chance to practice. Yeah. Now, I'll wager that when you're off duty, you practice with the finest checker players in this city. I never get any chance to practice. You're the only one around the whole place who ever play checkers with me. You know, I thought at one time that I might interest the queen in the game. Mm. But she couldn't seem to appreciate his charms. Remarkable woman, Her Majesty. A remarkable woman. But she simply will not play checkers. Mm. It, uh, it will be Your Majesty's first move this time. No, sir. Well, there we are. Uh, beg pardon, sir, but you've got to jump. <laughs> oh, have I? Uh, so, you do practice, don't you, Phipps? Mm. Tell me. Tell me, Phipps, have you any children? Uh, six, sir. All sons, I presume? No, sir, there's one daughter. Married? Yes, sir, she is. To a young man of her own choice? Uh, yes, sir, unfortunately. She chose a scientific farmer, sir. And I may say that it's been a source of uh, some regret to me and to her mother. You wanted her to marry someone else? Uh, yes, sir. We didn't consider him uh, quite uh, eligible, shall I say. Mm. We'd hoped the girl might marry in her own class. She happy? Yes, sir. I suppose she's happy and in a rather rustic sort of way, sir. Big pardon, sir. That's the buzzer. See who it is, will you, Phipps? Yes, sir. I want to talk to you, Father. Uh, yes, my dear. Alone. You, uh, you may go, Phipps. It will be my next move, sir. I want you to tell me something, Father. And I want you to tell me the truth. Now, what is it, then? Didn't you know about this ghastly thing they're trying to do? Were you part of the conspiracy? No, I didn't know. Oh, I'm glad, Father. Well, they're not going to make a political bride out of me. Do you know this man you're supposed to marry? Prince William? No, but I see his picture in the newspapers, surrounded by a lot of chorus girls. Well, you shouldn't read those kind of newspapers. Everyone knows what a rotter he is. If I marry him, they'll all be laughing at me. Or sympathizing with me, it'll be just as bad either way. I tell you, Father, I won't do it. I won't do it. I'll renounce my position. I'll go into exile, but I won't marry that foul man. But my dear child, you have to marry someone. You must do your share toward perpetuating the family. The family can end here and now, for all I care. If they must have two male children, they can adopt them. I'm sick of being royalty. I want to be a person. Well, being a member of the royal family has its advantages, Anne. Think of all the orphan asylums you can inspect. Oh, don't joke about it, Father. It's terribly serious to me. Why, when we drive through the streets and I... I look at the poor beggars, I, I think to myself... I know, you think to yourself cheerfully, gladly. Would I change places with even such as you? I know. I've read that speech to myself a thousand times in the days of my youth. And did it do me any good? Have I ever become a person? Have I ever found that freedom that is enjoyed by the celebrated beggar in the gutter? I'm afraid not, Anne. I turned out to be a king. And you intend to be just a king all the rest of your life? Well, I'm afraid I'll have to stick to the job now, even if there isn't any future. <laughs> well, never mind, Father. You're a good king, a noble king. Well, I could be a bad king for all the differences it make, Anne. Young Granton, for instance. He's a commoner by birth, but he's a royalist at heart. And I'm quite sure that if we were languishing in exile, you would find young Granton perched on a soapbox in the park, arguing for the restoration, and he'd go to his death crying, Long live the king. Oh, no, he wouldn't. Granton would go into exile with us and be glad to do it. 
Well, how do you know that? Well, I talk to him now and then, naturally. Oh, I see. Ah, oh, Gunn, we were just discussing you. Me, sir? Yes. Yeah. What would you say if I told you I decided to abdicate? Would you tremble in every fiber of your being? Would you draw your sword if you had one? And would you cry, no, 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 a thousand times no, over my dead body you leave the throne? Or would you murmur devoutly to yourself, it's about time the old boy got on to himself and uh, retire? I can only say, sir, that I should follow your majesty in any venture you might choose to undertake. There. Thank you, Gunton. Thank you. That's all I want to know. May I make so bold, sir, as to ask whether you have any such revolutionary idea in mind? You may make so bold. But my answer is no. I have the faintest idea of abdicating. Oh. You have the papers, sir, for which you asked. Papers? I asked the papers? Yes, the orders for the execution of the prisoners. Oh, you found them? Yes, they're ready for signature. Well, well, you think they might have to lose them again? Yes, sir. Well, that'll be all. That'll be all. How long has this been going on? What? This little romance. How did you know? King knows everything. You'd know that if you paid strict attention to your school books. Oh, Father, you've got to help us. You're the only one who can help us. I know, but you haven't told me how long this has been going on. For months. We fell in love. We couldn't help it. Well, that's a natural impulse, I suppose. Have you made any plans for the future? Yes, we're going to elope as soon as Mother's landed in America. We'll go to France. That's a free country, isn't it? Reasonably so. And after we get there, we'll be married, and Freddie will find work of some kind. He's always wanted to write or paint or something. So we'll have babies and be happy, and you'll come to visit us. And the third day of my visit, Grant will say, is your father going to stay here forever? Oh, he won't say any such thing. He loves you. And besides, he's much too sweet to be mean to anyone. Well, are you aware of the character of your fiancé's family? Of course I am. Freddie's father is one of the richest men in the kingdom. I know. Old Mr. Granton is one of the pillars of the state financially. But he is a plumber. A wholesale plumber? Nevertheless, he does mess up with bathroom utensils. I don't care what he is or isn't. I love Freddie and nothing in heaven or earth is going to stop me from marrying him. I'm afraid your mother will not be very enthusiastic about this. I think I hear the buzzer. Her Majesty, the Queen. You happen to realize what time it is? My, my, it is, isn't it? Here you two sit talking, talking, talking of heaven knows what. And in half an hour I'm going away across 3,000 miles of ocean to America into a strange, barbarous country. It's barbarous at all. It is barbarous. I've seen moving pictures about it. Where did that checkerboard come from? General Northrop must have left that here. Are you going to check your clothes for the procession? Yes, I am. It's the uh, Hussar's uniform. It, it is the Hussar's uniform. Then why not do something about it? And you too. The procession starts at four sharp, and I want you to look very neat. There are to be over 30 photographers between the palace and the dock. I hope they don't take any close-ups. I look awful in the film. away. I want you to be very sure that nothing happens which might in any way jeopardize the coming marriage of Princess Anne to Prince William of Grec. Do you understand? Yes, Your Majesty. In two months, Her Royal Highness will have a birthday. I've arranged a ball for the occasion. You will see that she has an enjoyable evening. Yes, Your Majesty. And it's most unfortunate that I have to go away at this time, just when your engagement to Prince William is to be announced. But the mission which takes me away is a very important one. 
I am going uh, to do my duty. I want you both to bear that in mind while I'm away. Don't worry, Mother. You can leave everything to us. We'll do our best in our small way here at home. Princess Anne wishes me to tell you that the ball awaits your appearance, sir. Oh, yes. Thank you. Here you are. Thank you, sir. birthday, my darling. Look, 
I can see the flashes. Fine. Stay on the cathedral. I don't say the Continental Bank building. Your Majesty, General Norfolk told us, sir. All officers will report to their commands immediately. My men will escort the ladies to safety. Very well, then. Fighting is started, Your Majesty. I'm so glad you warned us. Firing line? No, sir. It's the war office. That is undoubtedly the safest place in the city. Come, you go, sir. Sorry to disturb your majesty, but we're taking measures to defend the palace. There might be unexpected developments. Well, go ahead and take them. You won't disturb me at all. Very good, sir. In with those third man, you men. On the double. Look, they're putting machine guns right in front of the palace. Your Highness mustn't stand at that window. But I want a watch. And dear, you mustn't stay there. But why not? But what are those things? Sandbags, sir. They make rather good protection against stray bullets, sir. Well, who ordered them? General Norfolk, sir. Well, it's very charming of Norfolk to be so concerned for my safety. But you take them right out of here. I don't want my apartment all messed up with sandbags. Yes, sir. After those sandbags, you men, on the double. Thank you very much, Major Blake. Not at all, sir. Everything shall be as you say, sir. Well, who told you that? It uh, goes without saying, sir. Thank you. It's very nice to have you around, Major. Thank you, sir. And uh, may I go now, sir? You may go now. Thanks. You know, I have half a mind to give that fellow another medal. Is the yacht anchored to Stanage? Yes. The road open? Oh, yes. About a two hours drive, isn't it? Father, we're running away. No, but you are, and Granton's going with you. But I can't do that, sir. Oh, you want to escape? Here's your chance. But how are we going to do it? The yacht is anchored to Stanage. I'll give orders for her to sail tonight for Sherberg with you on board. Now go upstairs, pack your things, change your clothes, and don't forget to take your toothbrush. Oh, Father, at last, at last, I'm getting away from this prison. I'm through with being royalty. Yes. I'm going to live. But Your Majesty, we can't oh, be enough. Oh, don't argue with him, Freddy. We're going, we're going. Yes, and you'd better hurry. I'll hurry, all right. Oh, thank you, my darling. Thank you. You'll never be sorry you've done this for me. I'll be so happy. And you'll be happy, too, won't you? I expect so. If I could only see Mother's expression when she hears about this. Sir, I thank you too. But I can't accept this gracious offer, sir. Oh, really. Why not? I couldn't leave you with all this danger threatening, sir. Oh, don't be silly. I have a whole army and navy to protect me. I don't need you. Sir, what is it you want me to do? You're to marry my daughter. You're to write or paint or something and you're to have babies. I forget what it all is about. General Northrop. See your majesty. There, you see. The palace is perfectly safe. Even Northrop's willing to come here. Do you want to see him, sir? I do not. You see him, find out what he wants, and I'll get the orders off to Senate. All right. Show him in, Phipps. Very good, sir. Here's the... Uh, the Supreme Excellency, the Prime Minister. Where's the king? Majesty, he's gone to his room. I have a communication with Dr. Thelm and I thought he might care to see. Well, I can take it to him, sir. Oh, never mind. Doesn't matter anyway. I suppose his majesty doesn't care to be annoyed with business matters just now. Here, give that to the king. I beg your pardon, General Northrop. Those are his majesty's cigars. I know it. Get me the Admiralty office. I give you an order, Mr. Granton. You intend to obey it? Or must I entrust it to a more dependable servant? <laughs> Who's laughing at whom? I want to talk Lord Enno. This is General Northrop. Yes. Are the rest of the ships ready to go into action? Good. That'll be all. Well? Lord Benton, to see his majesty. Send him in. I'll see him. Send him out. Lord Benton. Ah, 
Ah, not for a few. You seem to be in full possession. Yes, the king has gone to his room. He's hiding under the bed, I suppose. <laughs> well, it's the best place for him. And how goes the battle? Oh, don't call that far to battle. Ah. Well, I hope you get it over with soon. That noise is simply terrific. Oh. I know I shan't be able to sleep a week tonight. Well, we won't quit until we made a clean job of it. Well, you'd better hurry it up. Prince William of Black arrives for the wedding next week. I am told that he is a very nervous young man. Ah, ah, ah. ah good evening, gentlemen. Your good Majesty. Evening. Ah, Northrop, have a cigar. Oh, you have one. Did you get my note, sir? Yes, I did. I've had the admiralty on the wire. The rest of the ships are ready to start shelling. Well, you can't do that. You'll kill thousands of men and women. But I've given them fair warning. I've issued an ultimatum, giving them a half hour in which to lay down their arms and surrender. And what was their answer to that? They said they'd never give in until I was ready to arbitrate. Well, why not arbitrate? But I arbitrate that rebel! Well, I appreciate the delicacy of your feelings, Norfolk, but the naval guns will not go into action. I regret to say, sir, that I must be allowed to handle this crisis as I see fit. I merely told you my plans just as a matter of courtesy. I'm overwhelmed with gratitude. Sometimes frankness pays. And I'm here to tell you that I'm running this show and I intend to run it in my own way. You're quite right. Frankness does pay sometimes. So I'd like to ask you what are your intentions. Are you going to set up a republic? Oh. You've already bullied your way into the dictatorship there by making me more of a cipher than ever. Your next step is evidently the presidency. When are you going to take that step? I resent that insinuation. I resent it bitterly. That was not an insinuation. That was a frank statement of fact. Well, whatever it was, I resent it. What was that? It's the stupid field artillery. They're shooting the wrong way. Something gone wrong with your plans, General? I have some put a stop to this nonsense. I think they're aiming at us. I'll break a few kernels for this. Sir, here, don't forget the Sunday hat. Oh! Oh! I think I'd better go over to the foreign office. You take my advice and try the cell. You mustn't stay here, sir. It's very dangerous. Well, you've assured me of your loyalty. I think I can depend on you. Always, sir. I want to get the Princess Anne out of this. The yacht is in Stanage. Granton will take her there. You escort them both as far as the harbor to see if they get away safely. Now get a car, a good one. Have it at the Quint Street entrance right away and hurry. Yes, sir. Car, be ready in a few minutes. We'll go at once. But what were those explosions? Shells, my dear. The fact of the matter is, the revolutionists stole General Northrop's artillery when he wasn't looking. And they're trying to shell the palace? It seems that way. What are you doing? Do you think I'd go now? But my dear child, you must go. There's your one chance, you can't lose it. Too late now, Father. I'm going to stay here because I love you. And because we must be together when they come. Good for you, Anne. Well, there's nothing left for me to do except burst into tears, I suppose. One seems to have landed in the Queen's room. <coughs> I wish Phipps were here. What do you want of Phipps? Anything you want, I'll do it. Go down to the cellar right away and get about a dozen bottles of champagne. It seems to me the time has come to all get gloriously drunk. Oh, Father, that's a marvelous idea. I Your think... Majesty, what? Dr. Feldman is here. Feldman. Feldman? He wants to see you. He insists that he must. Oh, Father, don't see him. He's Nonsense. Might... Show him in. You go get that champagne. Look, sir, I'd better stay here. Do what I tell you. Get the champagne. Get lots of it. You never can tell this fellow Feldman might want to drink, too. Go on. Come in, Dr. Feldman. Thank you, sir, for having the courage to see me. I hope you'll pardon the appearance of this room. It's a bit upset at the moment. Is the uh, bodyguard absolutely necessary? I am unarmed. You may go, Blint. Well, tell me, Doctor, to what am I indebted for this visit, etc., etc.? A great many lives are being lost tonight, sir. Unnecessarily lost. Otherwise, I should not have risked my own to come here. I commend your courage, Doctor. But tell me, why are your people trying to batter down the palace? You know, they might want to use it for a museum or something. You, sir, have never come into contact with reality. You have lived your quiet, detached life here. No one has ever told you the truth. No one ever takes the trouble to tell me anything. I understand. But you are the ruler of this nation. That's where you make a great mistake, Doctor. I am not the ruler. I am merely the king. And are you satisfied, sir, that you have been a good king? 
Well, I've always been on time at all official functions. My public speeches have been brief and in good taste. I've always appeared presentable on dress parade. My home life is above reproach. I don't know what else I could have done to uh, have fulfilled my obligations to my people. You could have prevented them from being driven to despair. I could have done it. You uh, have an exaggerated idea of my importance, Doctor. Well, the people have the vote. Why don't they use it? Why don't they throw North about and put you in? The issue is up to you, sir. It is not up to me. I have no right to meddle in the state's business. I'm merely a figurehead and an unto ornamental one of that. Then, sir, on behalf of the people, I must demand your abdication. Now the murder will start. Hello. Hello, uh, put me through the animal. Now you will see what your rage has come to. Hello. Oh, I, I, I must speak to Lord please. The king. The king. The king. Armistice will do no good. This country must have a permanent peace. I warn you, sir. If you wish to save your country, you must abdicate, and you must do it at once. There's nothing to be done now except that your people must surrender. And trust ourselves to the mercy of Northrop. He'll overrule you, oh, sir. Oh, no, he won't. I give you my word. You must take my word for it. I accept your word, sir. You do. Thank you, Doctor. You're a very unusual fellow. Your Majesty, General Northrop is on his way up. He is, eh? Well, Dr. Fellman, I don't know how you got here, but you must go away as soon as possible. Here, Blanton, take Dr. Fellman through my apartments and escort him as far as necessary. <laughs> Goodbye, Doctor. Now, I want you to keep this conversation secret, especially from our mutual friend who's on the way up. I am here, my friend! Blanton, take him that way. Did you give that order for the naval guns to cease firing? I did. Well, I have come here to tell you that the last order you will give out. You don't have to remind me of that. Oddly enough, I commented on that very fact at the time. I want you to understand that I am in charge here. And I won't have any interference from you, do you or anyone else. Do you realize that you're talking to your king? Ah, we're talking now as man to man. I will stand to meddling my affairs. Give me the answer of the office. The battleships will resume firing. The battleships will not resume firing. I warn you not interfere with me. I gave those orders to the Navy and they orders to stand. I'm the one to give orders to the Navy. I am the dictator by act of Parliament. I'm the king by the grace of God. Ah, don't use that catchphrase on me. You'll be king only as long as I and my army are on hand to keep you on the throne. Now look here, Northrop. I'm getting awfully fed up with you and your army. I'm fed up with your bombast and your flag-waving patriotism. In fact, I'm getting awfully fed up on your personal appearance. Oh, who are you, Your Majesty? Oh, don't Majesty me. As you said before, we were talking man to man. Now, I'm going to take this opportunity to remind you of something. I hope the revolution wins. Now, you're a contemptible traitor. Possibly I am. Possibly I've been a traitor all along. But if my throne depends on you and your army, I don't want to sit on the rotten thing any longer. Hello. The war office for you. No, no, thank you. Hello. Yes. yes. What? <laughs> oh, the cowards. Yes, good. I'll be right over. Well, they've surrendered. Who oh, has? Hellman and Laker. On condition we arbitrate. Well, of course, you'll arbitrate. Oh, yes, we'll arbitrate right enough with machine guns. This matter will be settled without machine guns. And by whom? By me. <laughs> by you. <laughs> I don't need you and your army. I don't need your hand thick power, but I have another power on my side. And what power may I ask the people? <laughs> Use the people! <laughs> Use the people for all their wealth! But first be sure they are on your side! <laughs> What's he billowing about? He was just putting me in my place. Oh, well, don't worry about him. What you need is some champagne. I know, my dear, but the revolution is over. Then we have nothing to celebrate. 
You know, sir, that fellow Northrop is becoming absolutely insufferable. He came in here this morning and acted as if he owned the place. I know, but I talked back to him. Was that a call? Sounded like a shock. Someone just made an attempt on General Northrop's life, but the bullet only grazed his cheeks, sir. The crowd outside are in a terrible state of excitement. Well, perhaps if I appear on the balcony, that will be assured. Well, I wouldn't do that, sir. The temper of that mob is violently hot. Oh, but I wouldn't go out there. They might try to assassinate me. Don't worry, Anne. If they couldn't hit Northrop at close range, they won't harm me. I didn't have room for it. Well, fine room. I'd have trouble enough getting this palace patched up without having to worry about your personal appearance. Where are you going? I was just going for that order on. I want you to go up and talk to Anne. But I haven't anything particular to say. I about. don't know what's happened to Anne while I was away. This absurd revolution seems to have gone to her head. If there were to be an outburst of temperament during the ceremony, well, you know what Prince William is like. He'd, he'd pack up and go home without another word. Well, you wouldn't call that a tragedy. It would be a disaster. I want you to explain this to Anne. She pays more attention to you. Heaven knows why. You must talk to her. And be firm. Yes, my dear, I will. His Majesty the King. Come in, Father. Well, what is it, Father? Sit down, Anne. Anne, I'm going to be very firm with you. And if you find me being otherwise than firm, you must remind me. Well, what is it that Mother has told you to tell me now? Anne, I'm to give you this bit of advice. When the Archbishop says to you, do you take this man for your lawful husband, you are to respond, I do. You are not to tell him where you think he should go. I suppose I feel like saying just that. You are to have absolutely no feelings at all today. If any apropos remarks occur to you, you are to direct them to your husband. I'll kill myself first. That's another thing that you possibly must not do today. Father, can you stand by and joke about it? I gave you your chance during the revolution. You wouldn't take it. I couldn't take it. I couldn't. Can't you understand that? You did the right thing then, Anne. And I was glad and I was sorry that you did it. But you bear the curse of royalty, Anne. You'll always do the right thing, even when you know it's the wrong thing. I wish they'd stood us up before a firing squad that night. Prince William of Greg to see Her Royal Highness. Shall we see him? Yes, perhaps he'll change his mind. Send him in. His Imperial Highness Prince William of Greg. Oh. 
Ah, how are you, William? That is, I should say, Willie. Your Majesty. Your Royal Highness. We're surprised to see you. Pleasantly surprised, I might add. I came here expressly to see the bride. Tell the truth, sir. I had hoped I might see her alone. You have something of an intimately personal nature to discuss, I take it. Exactly. Well, uh, that being the case, I shall take this opportunity to take a ride on my bicycle. Shall we both sit down? No. You apparently have something on your mind. I have. It's, it's killing me. I would like to have it there. You're worried about our marriage? I am. I thought so. I may as well begin by telling you. I don't like you. No. I don't like you a bit. And you'd like to be released? I most certainly would. Then I release you. I wouldn't think of holding you against your will. <laughs> I merely said I should like to be released. Doesn't mean that I'm asking to be released. Then what do you want? I merely want to talk to you. And I should say a few things while our relationship is still on a fairly friendly basis. After all, I shall have to live with you for fully two weeks. The thought of revolting to you None too palatable to me. The fact remains, we are about to be married. Why not make the most of it? Go ahead and make the most of it if you like, but don't expect any hearty cooperation from me. Look here, Anne. I'm perfectly willing to swallow my prejudices against you and pretend to be highly romantic. Why not respond? Oh, so that's it. You want me to make love to you. Oh, I beg your pardon. Betty! Why, Anne, what's the matter? If you don't This mind, is the man I love, the man I'll always love. Why, Anne, I've misjudged you grossly. Grant my apologies. I've been making indecent proposals to your fiance. She's not my fiance, she's yours. And I love her. And I love you. I can't pretend to love anyone else. Well, it does make it a bit awkward, doesn't it? I know it does, and I'm terribly sorry. Not for you, but for her. Well, is everything settled? Yes, everything's settled. Then the wedding is not to be cancelled? Oh, no, Your Majesty. We're more desperately in love than ever. How perfectly charming. I really must be moving on. However, we will meet again at the altar. With the wedding bells ringing merrily, and the organ booming forth this impressive message of... Oh, shut up. Goodbye. Good day, young man. My congratulations. Good day, sir. Good afternoon, Willie. What a curious young man. He's loathsome. It's my duty to tell you, sir, that I must resign from Your Majesty's service. Oh, you're going away to forget, I suppose. Yes, sir. Oh, Father, I can't let Freddy go. I'd much rather kill myself. Well, you may have that done for you. What do you mean, sir? What? Well, I have an appointment here with Dr. Feldman and Mr. Laker, his friend, very shortly. And if we don't pacify Laker before the wedding, there will be bomb, bullet, and so forth. Well, then, sir, we'd better notify General Northrop and the police. No, no, this is my private secret. I'm not sharing it even with General Northrop. But, sir, no member of the royal family ought to venture out into that mob. Let him have the ceremony here. No, the ceremony will be at the cathedral as planned. We mustn't disappoint the archbishop. Why, he has an elaborate candle display all ready for the occasion. Father, have pity on me. I'm desperate. I have nothing but unspeakable horror to look forward to. Let them throw their bombs. Don't try to talk them out of this. I'm not going to. I'm going to introduce them both to your mother. Her Major. Oh, get away. Here, Branton, I want you to give this to the Archbishop. It's the prayer he's to deliver at the conclusion of the ceremony. Yes, ma'am. Something you composed yourself, my dear? Yes, I wouldn't leave it to that old numbskull. He'd say just the wrong thing and get into the newspapers. I have to think of everything. And? Don't you realize that you're to be ready to leave the palace in 20 minutes? Yes, Mother. I've memorized the whole list of instructions. I'll start. What on earth's the matter with her? Well, she just had an interview with Prince Willie, and she's not feeling quite herself. Poor Anne. Poor Anne, indeed. That rebellious young lady doesn't know when she's in love. You remember the day of our wedding? 
I do. What were your emotions then? How did you feel? What, what, what were you thinking of? I know what I was thinking of. I was grimly determined to do my duty. And you did. But did you feel a spark of rebelliousness, Martha? Wasn't there a small but insistent voice within you that kept saying, run away now, run away before it's too late, save your one chance of love, save your happiness? Didn't you have to fight hard to suppress it? I did suppress it. My strength was greater than my weakness. I didn't run away. I went to the cathedral. I faced you at the altar. And when we stepped out in the balcony to be cheered by the crowds, I smiled on them to let them know that I was happy. Have you forgotten that I smiled? No, I haven't forgotten. I haven't forgotten that smile, Martha. It was a gruesome smile. And when I saw it, I wanted to say to you, Go away now. Go to the man you love. Go before it's too late. Don't, don't ruin your life for me. I didn't ruin my life. I've made a success of it. I've served my country well, and I want my daughter to be worthy of the honorable tradition which she inherits. Poor Anne. She'll be a rotten queen. General Northrop and Lord Burton to see your majesties. Oh, great Scott. I don't want to see him right now. Why not? Well, to tell you the truth, Northrop and I are not exactly on speaking to her. What nonsense. You need pay no attention to that blowhard Northrop. Phipps, show Burton and Northrop to the council chamber. I'll settle him. Come. Your Majesties, Your Majesty, I've just been informed by the Grecking ambassador of a conspiracy to prevent the wedding, and that the Princess Anne is planning an elopement. An elopement? With who? With Frederick Grant. Yes, with that snippy young secretary of yours. Who told you that? Why, Prince William himself, Your Majesty. And the Princess told him that she was in love with Granton, and her actions confirmed it. Yes, I've had Granton arrested. He's in the palace guardhouse now. Well, what do you propose to do with Granton? Well, Your Majesty, I have a suggestion to offer. There's a tramp steamer sailing within the hour for the eastern coast of South America. Why not place Granton aboard that boat? No, it's safer to shoot him. General Northrop is right. Oh, the scoundrel! I could kill him myself. No, no. I, I think an execution would be messy. It would cause talk. I favor Burton's plan. It's much more sensible. But no one need know that he's been put to death. Oh, but Your Majesty, his father might become inquisitive. Who cares what his father thinks? He's a plumber. Ah, but he's a wholesale plumber. And don't forget, Northrop, Mr. Granton Sr. contributes to your campaign fund. Oh, well, well, we'll put him aboard the ship then. This is the crowning outrage to think that this has been going on in this very palace and that I shouldn't have known anything about it. It does seem incomprehensible, doesn't it? Phipps, send me Blint right away, please. Yes, Your Majesty. Who started this miserable, sordid affair? It wasn't an affair. It was a romance. Northrop, will you condescend that to make it entirely legal, please? Oh, Blint. I have just written an order of exile, Mr. Grant. You ought to execute that order. You're to take him in a closed car to the harbor and put him on board, uh, what's the name of that boat? Oh, the steamship Kaleo, sir. Captain Wickley, commanding. Friend of yours. Oh, yes, sir. Ah. You give this order to the captain, signed by me, countersigned by General Norfolk. He contains full instructions. And see that the prisoner isn't put aboard until the last moment before sailing. And I suggest, Major, that you remain with him until the ship is well out of the harbor. He might be a good swimmer. What we got that in time. Oh! The blow would have finished me. Dr. Feldman is here, accompanied by... Feldman! Feldman! What does he want? He says he has an appointment with His Majesty. He is accompanied but by... But this can't be true! What does this mean? It means that Dr. Feldman has an appointment with me. Is Dr. Feldman alone? No, sir. He is not alone. As I've been attempting to explain... Plain, sir, for some time he is accompanied by Mr. Laker. Laker? Why, that dirty... I is... won't have him in the palace. But he's already in. Then have him put out no, at once. We can't do that. We must speak to him very kindly. If not, he's liable to upset all our plans for the wedding. What could they do to prevent the wedding? Well, they could assassinate Prince Willie, thereby removing the bridegroom. Oh, very well. I consent to see them under protest. Yes. But you better let me do the talking. Thank you, General Northrop. I think you can leave the situation in my hands. Bring them in, Phipps. Yes, Your Majesty.
Dr. Selman and uh, Mr. Laker. Gentlemen, permit me to present Her Majesty, the Queen. Your Majesty, Your Majesty. General Northrop, Marks Burton, of course you know. Now that's all settled, I'll hear what you have to say because none of us must be late for the wedding. Your Majesty knows the situation so far as we are concerned. You have been warned. Thoroughly warned. Your Majesty, a week ago, after an extremely violent battle, the revolutionists announced that they were willing to lay down their arms. Our surrender constituted an acceptance of our terms. What were those terms? That the chief cause of all the trouble, the unemployment situation, be relieved. You, General Northrop, have refused even to consider a council for arbitration. Quite right, too. I can do nothing about unemployment until we have the money available. May I ask, sir, what is being done with a loan of 100 millions of dollars recently negotiated in America? Ah, I knew it. You're trying to rob our country of the money I earn. The people must pay the interest. Someday they must pay the principal. They have a right to their share. Is that unreasonable, Your Majesty? Is that unreasonable, Your Majesty? I beg your pardon. I wasn't listening. Uh, I told you so, Feldman. We wait for our time coming here to talk to these tyrants. Your Majesty, I have tried to bring this business to a sensible conclusion. I am afraid it cannot be done. I don't care to be dictated to by you people. I shall arbitrate when I am entirely ready to do so. On my own terms, not yours. Very well. We'll show you our strength today. But every royal candle in Europe is represented here today. The Emperor and Empress of Greek are here. They'll have to take their chances along with the rest oh. of you. And if any of you reach the cathedral alive, it will be due to an oversight at our part. All right, we'll settle this matter once and for all today. It shall be a fight to the death. To the death. And the blood guilt will be yours. I accept it with thanks. Come on, Feldman. We've talked enough. Now, just one minute. Now, Northrop, I'm quite sure that you'll be willing to take the blame for my death, but I couldn't allow you to assume that responsibility. I have here a very interesting volume, a very rare volume. It's the Constitution of our country. I took it out of the library last night and read it from cover to cover. And really, it is surprisingly interesting reading. I must ask your majesty to excuse me. I have much to attend to. Now, Laker, you tend to me just a minute. I won't take much of your time. As I said, I read the Constitution last night, and I was deeply impressed with the passages that describe the duties, functions, and powers of the king. General Northrop, it is my command that Parliament be dissolved. What? Parliament is dissolved. Have you gone completely mad? Well, you can't do that. Look at it in the Constitution. But, Your Majesty, with no Parliament, the state ceases to exist. No, it doesn't. I am the state. I shan't be a party to any such idiocy. You mean you resign? I do. Splendid. I've had your resignation type for quite some time, just in case. Sign right there. Oh. Dr. Feldman, I appoint you Prime Minister. You're a former cabinet. Have a general election for a new Parliament once. The fate of our country is entrusted to these men. It'll mean death and dishonor for us all. For everything we've cherished. Sir uh, Northrop, it's high time you were taken down. You've been insufferably arrogant. You seem to forget that in this, as in every well-ordered monarchy, the throne is supreme. There, Northrop, that's that. Your Majesty, I am a soldier. I shall continue to devote my life to my country. Very well said, Northrop. Uh, as a soldier, you can help us enforce the laws, the new laws. Good day, General. Good day, Lord Burton. You're out of a job, too. Uh, your Majesty, my services are always at your command. We can always do with a good diplomat. Mm. Good afternoon. Thank you. Good day, sir. It worked wonderfully. You both handled it splendidly. Your <laughs> Majesty, I... your people will bless you I... for this. Thank they you. will know, never I... cease to honor I your know, name. But you we, are we, a we king, must sir. A yes, real king. Oh, we are proud of you. Goodbye, Your Majesty. Goodbye, Your Majesty. What possessed you to do this? I want to save the wedding, my dear. I want to prevent a revolution. It seemed the only way to... Nobody had any intention of throwing bombs, and you know it. You made the whole thing up. The revolution was nothing but a bluff. How'd you guess that? I'm not a fool. Well, I had to get rid of Northrop. And it seemed the only way... I had to do something desperate. So quietly, without anyone knowing, not even you, my dear, I made friends with Dr. Fellman and his friend, Mr. Laker. If you'd left it to me, I'd have got rid of Northrop, and with no assistance from Dr. Fellman either. But I shan't complain of that. The fact remains, Northrop is gone. <laughs> the wedding is safe, the supremacy of the throne is established, and I shall now be able to conduct this state without interference. <laughs>
of any kind. Yes, my dear, I knew you'd be pleased. Well, we're late already. We must start at once. So do, please, hurry. And I'll wait for Ed. Now, then. When you and Anne are driving through the crowded streets, and especially when you're walking up the aisle, I want you to appear radiantly happy. We'll all be smiling brightly, my dear. Uh, oh, Phipps. Yes, sir. That uh, son-in-law of yours. Oh, William. Does he play checkers? Uh, I, I believe he does, sir. Good. We'll have a two of them. Oh, no, 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 sir. You mustn't do I that. I want to teach you not to be such a snob. And Phipps. Yes, sir. Tell that to Major Blood at once, it's important. Uh, yes, sir. Very well, sir. I'm ready, Father. Darling child, wherever you go, whatever you do, I want you to know that I love you. Never mind all that. We have to go. We mustn't keep them waiting. It wouldn't look right. We must never do anything as long as we live that doesn't look right. You do blame me for this, don't you? Of course I blame you. But I'm going through with it, every bit of it. And I never want to see you again, or mother, or anyone else in this hateful, cruel place. Your Majesty. Send him in. Why, Anne? Oh, no, darling. darling. Don't let them take me. Kill them. Do anything, but don't let them take me. Would you step this way, please? Frederick, you take this woman for your lawful wife? You do. And you take this man for your lawful husband? You do. Do you promise to love, honor, and obey? You do. You wed her with this ring. You endow her with all your worldly goods. Let no man put asunder as king by the grace of God. As Lord Vicar of the Holy Church in this our country, I pronounce you man and wife. Blant, give me that order of exile. Father, what are you doing? I'm adding the word and wife to Frederick Grafton's name. Are we married? I should hope so. Phipps? Yes, sir. You and Blant are the witnesses. Thank you, sir. You're sailing in a few moments on the steamship Kaleo. I thought it best for you to be married respectively before you left. I don't think your mother would like it if you went under less conventional circumstances. But, sir, does, does the Queen know about this? Not yet. Oh, Father, I can't forget the things I said. And neither can I. But the memory of them will give me many laughs during the long winter evenings. Now, Brent will take you to the boat. But, sir, I, I'd like to say something, really. I, I, I know, but don't say it. You'd only stammer. Goodbye, my darling. <coughs> Oh. I'll send you the marriage license to Panama. But what are you uh, going to say to Mother and Prince William and all the rest? I'll be very firm. I'll let them know that I am the king. Oh. Now, Grant, take her away. Take her. She's messing up all my metal. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Take off that bridal veil. Put on a heavy overcoat. Go with them, Glenn. Gives me a headache. But you won't be going to the cathedral now, sir, will you? Yes, I'll be going to the cathedral now. But I will be back shortly.
and you have that checkerboard ready. 